joined now by the Ambassador for Israel to the United Kingdom, Zippy Hodavelli. Hello. Thank Hello, you for joining Kate. us on the programme this morning. What updates do you have for us, first of all, um, from Israel this morning? So, as you know, um, Israel is now in the 10th day of this war, this war that Hamas started in the horrible massacre of the 7th of October. Uh, many Israelis are traumatised and shocked from the atrocities that the world have seen in the last few days. Uh, I've seen um, so many families devastated, destroyed. They executed children in front of their parents. They uh, fired on babies and beheaded them. They hurt pregnant women, raped young women. Those atrocities are the type that no Western leader can stand and say, we can just carry on. Those type of terror actions, brutally and barbarically committed to innocent Israelis, need to be answered by a Western coalition that we can see now, President Biden, Prime Minister Sunak, all the Western leaders, they all support Israel's right for self-defense because you cannot imagine British Prime Minister that those type of atrocities will happen in his home in Manchester or in London and the British Army won't respond. What's the view on the humanitarian crisis in Gaza this morning? Uh, there is no humanitarian crisis because... There it, isn't? There is no. Uh, Israel is in charge of the safety of the Israelis. Hamas is in charge of the safety of the Palestinians. Hamas abused every single support of the international community and instead of taking care of his people, it created this underneath tunnel of terror a manufacturing of rockets that their own main target is to hurt innocent Jews in their homes. And this is the time that Hamas need to pay the price for its abuse, killing innocent Israelis, and now preventing from his own people to evacuate and to be safe. Israelis worked with the international organizations to make sure all Palestinian civilians will be safe. And we are giving them the opportunity to go south to a sheltered places, places that they will be safe. Unfortunately, the children of Kfar Aza, the people of Sderot, were not given this opportunity to be safe. They weren't alarmed. They didn't get alert. They were slaughtered in their beds. So Israel, Israel is just targeting military targets, and we want the international community to make sure Hamas will bring back home all those kidnapped people, including British citizens, by the way. Yesterday, I got a phone call from uh, Israeli citizens that said the mother was shot and the two teenager girls, 13 and 16, are kept hosted in Gaza, British citizens. We've been showing pictures this morning that would illustrate that there is a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Are you a mother? Yes. What would you think if your children would have been executed in front of your eyes? Would you expect your government to think about those Nazis committing those crimes and to say, wait a second, first of all, we need to protect the enemy and then to protect my children. Your children come as priority to your prime minister. So we Do have you know that? We have been showing images this morning that uh, illustrate that there is a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. So blame Hamas and ask Hamas why they started those atrocities walking so around. So you acknowledge that there is a humanitarian crisis? I'm saying there is no. Israel is working. So what do you think is happening? What is happening? There is a war in Gaza, a war that Hamas started by committing a horrible massacre on innocent Israelis. The world have what seen about the it, have seen that. Of those Wait a second. That are innocent civilians. Just just I want to say and give a little bit of a context. Those people created crimes that are worse than ISIS. When the American started this fight of ISIS together with the coalition forces, over 100 thousand civilians got caught in a crossfire. Israel is trying to prevent that. Israel is better than any other army in the world. We are alerting, we are giving them the opportunity to have a shelter. We are doing things that no other Western army did in the past. Better than any other army in the world? Can I, can I tell and you something? Better than any other army in the world? Yes, no so army. So where were they defending I'll, I your people you. last Saturday? We failed protecting the people of Israel. And this is why now we need to make sure Hamas won't be in our border. But I'm trying to say we, war for many years 
trying to build trust with the Palestinian people. We gave them the permission to work in our cities. We were trying to build a but better I'm future. I'm asking you about the innocent and, civilians and, that are losing now, their lives at the moment. And now we lost so you're many saying people. saying that it's not a humanitarian crisis. How, how can you say that? The humanitarian crisis at the moment is are in Israel. Are you saying they're subhuman? There is. No, no. Actually, they made the Jews subhuman. They treated them as subhuman. When you're taking babies, cutting them and tying them together and burning them to death, you're treating them less than an animal. Just the Nazis treated Jews and like that. And are guards and civilians responsible for that? The Hamas is responsible exactly. for that. Exactly. And what about the collateral damage of the um, guards and Hamas is responsible to that as well because they're the one who preventing from their people to get a shelter. Israelis gave them the opportunity to find a safe place in South Gaza, and they need to take it, because this is as, as the best it can be. And, and I'm going back to the World Coalition fighting ISIS. So Mosul was a place where 100,000 civilians were killed. I don't want to go back to your history by targeting German cities. Dresden was a symbol of that, because you knew that this is the only way to beat the Nazis and make them surrender. This is the reality that Israel is facing. Cruel, cruel, barbaric terror organization. This is Al-Qaeda. This is ISIS. This is similar to the Western the coalition grand, in the last few years. And the, the world grand, is a better place without the ISIS. The, the world will be a much better tell place me without what the Hamas. the invasion is going to look like? We are going to make sure that all Hamas capabilities will be destroyed. It means the underneath cities that Hamas has built with the great support of the international support team money by abusing it and turning it instead of facilities to the Palestinian people, turning it into a way of weaponizing and making sure that Israelis won't sleep safe in their homes by all those firing rockets, thousands of rockets, just the last week, 6,000 rockets were fired on Israeli cities. So this reality, this reality will be finished. What, we what, won't what give them the capabilities or the political control in the Gaza Strip. What will victory look like? Victory will look like, I actually have a very good vision. I will quote one of the citizens of Beri, a community in the south of Israel that lost almost 80% of its people, and some of them are kept hostage in Gaza. So he said, I want to see the sea from my window. He wants to see peace and quiet from his window. He doesn't want terrorists on his border. This is how peace will look like. No terror organization will be sitting in our border. Does that mean that Israel will occupy Gaza? I'm not saying, uh, but I'm not speaking about occupation because from 2005 we left Gaza, but we will make sure that whoever controls Gaza won't have even one terrorist alive in Gaza. We won't let this terror infrastructure. Who do you want to control on. Gaza? People, Who do you want? people that want peace. Do you have people in mind? Um, I think this is time for war. This is the, the war against Hamas is so serious. The fact that they built so many infrastructure that are based in schools, hospitals, they're using all the uh, civilian facilities in order to fight back Israel. This is exactly the complexity of this war, and we need to win it. How will you Please be sure, invite me. How will you be sure? Weeks not, from now, and I'll, ask me. You who can will come on every Gaza. week if you like, uh, Ms, Ms, Madam Ambassador. How will you make sure that you don't create a vacuum? There is no vacuum. We've just seen it. When the PLO uh, lost the election, Hamas took over. So there, there is never a vacuum. But we need to know that no terror organization can flourish on our border because our children will never be safe again if we will have another terror organization on our border. And every Israeli now, and we're all united, and the spirit in Israel, I just came back from Israel because I came with Foreign Secretary Cleverly. He came to show solidarity with the Israelis. And I saw the spirit. I was in the South. I saw people that their house still have spots of blood in their living room, but their spirit is high because they know that never in the past we had such a clear-cut war of good versus evil of people that are slaughtering babies versus people that are protecting their children in a shelter. Everyone saw the Israeli parents protecting the children in the shelters, and everyone saw the horrific footages of those beheaded babies, these horrors that created by Hamas terrorists. So this is such a clear-cut war. You want to eliminate uh, Hamas entirely. What do you suggest about people like Ishmael Haniyeh, who is um, in Qatar? at the moment? What should happen to people like that? Well, him? I think the Prime Minister and the Chief of Staff made it clear. Everyone that are involved with Hamas terrorism, they have a death sentence. Does that include him? 
I'm not giving you the list of the names. I'm just saying. But you said every, everybody. I'm saying everybody. I'm who's saying involved, he's a Hamas leader. I said everyone who's involved with terrorism will have to pay the price. Does that include Hishmal Ani? Do I look like the chief of staff of the Israeli IDF? No, but you are I'm representing the, no, I need the Israeli to tell you, government today. I need to tell you what are the aims. I don't need to get into military tactics, but I'm speaking clearly. They won't be left any capabilities to kill innocent children in Israel, because I think the world knows, and everyone who's watching this show knows, that what happened at the 7th of October, this horrific massacre, this is something make every parent not to sleep at night. And I'm a mother. I'm checking three times at night how my children are doing because we're all traumatized from the idea the terrorists walked into our bedrooms and killed brutally our children. President Biden says that a path to a Palestine state must remain open. I would say President Biden was very clear also about our right and our duty to fight this war against Hamas. And you know something? This is not the time to discuss future solutions because at the moment, we first of all need to be safe and we need to defend our children. And the Palestinian leadership at the moment supports Hamas. This is what we've seen. I mean, the fact there were no election in the Palestinian authorities because the majority of Palestinians in the West Bank support Hamas. So, so we don't want to see the same reality. So a two-state solution on hold for now? The only solution that is at the moment at the table is the safety of the children of Israel. You don't speak about peace with Germany when the Germans are attacking all Western Europe. This is the reality we're in. Think about Churchill in his, in his moment when all Europe surrounded and he had to stand still and to say, no, this is a pure evil. First of all, we need to defeat the pure evil. And then in the future, we need to speak about future peace. Chamberlain and Churchill were the two paths that Britain had during the Second World War. Everyone know how Chamberlain's attempts for peace were failed. And sometimes you need just to fight evil. And I think this is the moment where we're fighting pure evil. And, and the Americans know this okay. is why they're projecting so much support. And the British know this is why they're supporting us and every okay. single Okay, you asked if I'm a mother. You, you pointed Thanks. out that you're also a mother. A word for mothers in Gaza this morning? I want to say a word for Gaza, for Mother's Gaza this morning. Keep yourself safe. Don't How listen. How do they do that? Go south. You have, we have shelters. We have shelters. We, um, I'm speaking from mother to mother. Don't support those atrocities, killing innocent babies. This is the time that mothers in this region should stand together and to say, we don't want Hamas. Hamas is hurting you as much as it's hurting Israeli children. Madam Ambassador, I must let you go. Thank you very much indeed Thank for you. taking the time. Thank you. And as I say, do come and talk to us whenever you would want Thank to. We very much... I hope in times of peace as well. Absolutely.